Hello, this is lecture 17. This lecture is going to look at cavity closers and cavity barriers. So as a cavity wall is made up of two separate leaves of masonry with a space between, this brings up some issues where we might wish to create windows and doors and maintain protection of the structure from fire and also maintain the thermal performance of the wall. So this lecture is going to look at products and methods required to close the cavity. So it would be very rare for a building to have a wall without any windows. And sooner or later we're going to be faced with a design problem of how we deal with a cavity when we want to make a hole in the wall. And this creates a problem of what to do with that open cavity. How do we fill it? And we need to find a solution which is going to close that gap whilst continuing to maintain the integrity of that wall. The normal solution to, is to use a product specifically made for this purpose, a preformed cavity closer. These products have an insulation core and around about that is the plastic casing and they're designed to fit certain widths of a cavity. You can get them in various lengths so that we can create cavity barriers around most sizes of windows and doors. And we install them by pressing them tightly into the cavity between the two faces of masonry. And we would do that all the way around the, the window, top, side and bottom to make sure that we close the, the entire cavity. So cavity closers are installed between the two leaves of masonry, or sometimes between the insulation and the outer masonry. And most cavity closers have a lip or uh, an edge that can be placed against the top surface of the masonry. So in this example here where we've got our, uh, we're creating a window into this wall, we can see the red line that's sitting on top of the inner brickwork. Where a cavity closer is installed to the jam of a window, it's often held in place with a holding lug or a bracket. And that uh, lug is um, placed into a groove in the back of the cavity closer it's an adjustable height and we would then adjust that up to the height of the masonry and bed that into the mortar. And once the cavity closer has been installed, we can put the remainder of the construction in place. We can put the window, the uh, sole board inside um, and seal the whole thing up. And one of the benefits of cavity uh, closers round windows is that they uh, restrict cold bridging. The junction between a window and a wall is one area of a building where it's particularly susceptible to cold bridging. The insulation core of the cavity closer helps stop heat escaping around the edges of the window. It also serves to protect the, the wall from the passage of uh, moisture. So uh, because it's wrapped in plastic, it acts as a DPC, helping to um, stop moisture reach the inside of the building. But one of the main things that we're concerned about when we're talking about cavity barriers is fire. And fire is devastating uh, to, to buildings and property, but more importantly, um, it can threaten lives. And um, within buildings, we tend to put products in that we want to uh, act to restrict the passage of fire um, so that we've got the maximum amount of time for somebody to escape. So fire in a room can, if there's no cavity barriers, um, jump from the room into uh, the, the cavity and be spread between rooms and different buildings. And in the Scottish Building Regulations, um, Regulation 2.4, Standard 2.4, um, says that uh, every building must be designed and constructed in such a way that in the event of an outbreak of fire within the building, the unseen spread of fire and smoke within concealed spaces in its structure and fabric is inhibited. And the key point there is unseen spread of fire in concealed spaces. And they're really talking about uh, various cavities within the building. And as far as a cavity barrier goes, slightly different from a cavity closer. A cavity closer can mean something that's not fire rated that closes off a cavity. A cavity, fire is, a cavity barrier is specifically for um, the, to inhibit the spread of fire. And usually they are a mineral wool product, usually wrapped in a plastic sheet that's designed to fill the whole gap between two layers of uh, masonry. We can see in this image here, we've got a vertical one at a 
compartment wall or a party wall between two buildings and uh, the insulation stops on either side um, and because they're made of mineral wool they, they do participate within the insulation envelope of the, the building so it's not a, a significant break to be able to, to move from one insulation to the, to the next to install a cavity barrier. And we also need to install these cavity barriers horizontally within buildings so not only is it at um, certain distances along the, the, the wall um, but it's also at certain heights along the wall or between different floors and different flats, for instance. So where we've got buildings with uh, different occupation or common occupation, there are different rules for that. Um, but what we're really looking at is a separating wall uh, between um, or separating floor between different parts of a building. And where it says the, the wall needs to be a medium fire resistance duration, where we've got a cavity that runs alongside that, we need to uh, close that cavity at that point, put a, put a cavity barrier in to make sure that that stays um, as a consistent firewall. So if we go back to our picture here, we can see that the house in the middle of the terrace here has uh, suffered a, a significant fire. Um, but the buildings on either side are largely intact. There's still windows, they still look like they're in occupation. Um, and that's probably because within the masonry wall, there is some sort of cavity barrier that's been installed on the line of uh, these yellow lines. And that's stopped the fire from spreading within that cavity uh, to the neighboring property. So the regulations also state how we should divide up cavities and what they say is we can't just have one great big cavity. If we have a building um, where the wall is greater than uh, 20 meters, if all the surfaces are non-combustible, or 10 meters if there are uh, high risk materials, so that could be a timber frame. So mostly for masonry, it might be 20 meters. We would actually have to start dividing up cavities. So it's not enough just to say that one house is one a cavity compartment, if you like, we, we might have to start dividing them up individually. So if we look at an example here, there's uh, number 57 and number 59 in the street, two separate dwellings, but um, as is commonly the case, they're, they're part of the same building. And if we were to design this uh, today and think about how we might divide up the cavities, we would need cavity barriers all the way around all the windows and doors and uh, that would be to save fire passing from one room to the next in the house but also entering the cavity generally and because we've got two houses in separate occupations we'd be looking to have uh, a cavity barrier that uh, separated those two buildings and that wouldn't just be within the wall it would have to run into the roof space between them so that if any fire was in number 59 it wouldn't pass to number 57. We also need to stop fire moving from a wall or a cavity within a wall up into an open roof space where it could then grow and move into different areas of the house. So we would install a cavity barrier at uh, eaves level. If there was another story on this building, we would install one at the floor level. So in conclusion, although cavities are useful in terms of providing uh, thermal performance and protecting the building from weather, there are some important considerations which a designer has to consider when creating buildings using this technique. Cavities need to be closed at the windows to maintain weather protection, thermal efficiency, and they need to be divided to restrict the passage of fire. So aspects that you should take from this lecture are that cavity closers should be installed around windows and doors, that cavity closers can help reduce cold bridging, that they can also act as a DPC around openings, but cavity closers can also stop fire from entering a cavity for 30 minutes or more. That cavity barriers act to divide cavities to restrict the passage of fire in unseen spaces and that adjoining buildings or flats need to be protected from fire spreading from within the walls. Okay, thanks very much for listening and if there are any questions, please feel free to ask.